I asked that guy to do a selfie picture with me because he did, he pushed me and another guy through the whole airport, through the train, because they're so, so short staffed. He literally, so first, the guy, when I got to the waiting area for the assistance, the other guy had already been waiting half an hour. He was getting a little nervous. It turns out we're on the same flight. I did. And so, we're on the same flight. And so this gentleman, who ended up being, we're both the same age, wheeled both of us. So first I had given him 10. And then when I saw how much he had the wheelers on the train and everything to the other, I gave him 20. Another 20. Come man, see that those good Samaritans like that, they are rare. They are rare. And he pushed Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook was just better. This is an old white dude with the veteran hat. You know, he was, and what happened was, I didn't tell you the story. I'm sitting, and he comes to sit right next to me. It's like 10 seats open. But he comes and sit right next to me. Right next to me. Right next to me. Mr. Cook. I have to tell you the story about that. Anyway. I want to tell you guys the story of this wonderful old guy that I met. It's like, I think he said he was 81. Okay, so when I got into the assistance area at McCarran Airport in Vegas, right? So there was this, in this waiting in the assistance area, there was like about six or seven people. It's like a and then, but in the first row of seats, there was no one sitting there. Most of the people were like in wheelchairs and stuff. So there was this one guy sitting about like toward the left-hand side. It's like 12 rows of seats, 12 seats in a row. So I went down at the other end and sat at the seat next to the end. Because the seat at the end had a water bottle sitting in it. So it was just left over to somebody. So I sit there and I'm sitting there for a while. And after I sit there for a while, the old guy was sitting like about six or seven seats older, gets up, comes over, and sits down next to me. You know, he moves the water bottle, he sits down. And he says, so I'm like, okay, so I'm looking. <laughs> Wait, because you know, I'm looking like, there's nobody sitting here. It's like, you know, one time I, was, I had the same experience in a parking lot where there was nobody in the parking lot. And I parked my car. And this lady came in and parked right next to me. Right next to nobody. So I'm just thinking, why is this old? And he has like old white dude with the veteran. He had on a veteran hat. And so finally he says, uh, he says, oh, I... I he says, I think they're helping the people down on this side more because they know what's been to say hi or anything to me. And I was like, what? He said, yeah. He says, I thought I moved down here. I said, well, because well, I looked around and I said, well, okay, well, I'll keep an eye out too. And then, because, you know, there was nobody there. And it turns out we ended up waiting a fair amount. McCarran was having trouble. McCarran Airport in Las Vegas has, has staffing issues like a bunch of places right now, and they were overrun, and the people were doing their best to keep up, but they were overrun. So, anyway, finally a guy shows up and says, Hemsley, Hemsley. And I said, well, I'm Hemsley. And he said, yeah, I'm here. I said, but wait a minute, this gentleman was here half an hour before I was here. And, you know, you guys are coming for me, and I'm, I, I don't feel right. And he says, oh, well, let me just check. He says, well, I'm here for you. You know, it comes by the assignment they send us. To let me go in there. So he goes in there, and, he, and the guy's stuff is not there where it should be, but he figures it out. And he says, well, you know what? I'll just push both you guys. I'm like, you're just going to push both of us. He's like, yeah, I'll just push both of them. So his name was James. So the other, so Mr. Cook and I are getting pushed by now James. So James, so first I give James 10, you know. So I'm thinking, okay, James, but James is cool. James is about my age. And we start talking. And he turns out he had been in bands in LA and he was pushing us off too. And Mr. Cook was 
thankful. Well, thank you for even bringing it up. I said, well, I wasn't going to just let them come get me and leave you here after talking to you and you've been waiting half an hour. I said, I didn't feel right. He said, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And so James rode us all the way through there. And we had to go all the way through, get on a bus, train, excuse me, train, ride the train to another terminal. James pushing us the whole way. I get, I had given James ten dollars in the beginning. So after we rode through the train to the other side, he's pushing both of us. I reached in my pocket and I gave him another twenty. He didn't want to take it. No, no, no. I didn't. He didn't want to take the first test. Listen, this kind of kindness is so rare. Let me just reward you because I got it. I said, man, I got it. I got this, and I just want to reward you because this kind of consciousness is so rare, and you're so rare. And I just want to be a person who, who, who rewards that, you know, because that's so wonderful that you're like that. So he agreed to take the money. So he rolled, Mister. <laughs> uh, he, uh, I forgot his name now, but he rolled us over there, and so we got to talk. And I told him, "Oh yeah, I tipped him." He says, he says, he says, did you give him anything? I said, yeah, I gave him 20. He said, oh, let me. I said, no, no, no. No, 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 no. I don't want you. You're a veteran. I mean, I said, first of all, I'm one of the old children of the 60s, the old leftists who appreciate our veterans. I said, we all have family. I told him about Vietnam. I said, we all have family in Vietnam and had people come over affected. I didn't have to go, but I had to register. So we get in this whole long talk. He finds out I'm a doctor. We just talking up a storm. And so, finally when James comes back to roll us all, that James, it's all one big happy party. And we all rolled onto the plane. And then he said, well, he was, he, I could hear him in the distance, did you, that guy was really interesting. That guy was really interesting. You know, he really was a nice guy. I can hear him talking about me in the distance. <laughs> and that's what happened today. Just goes to show you, it's all old types. All types. Sometimes it's the human thing, right? The human condition. You know, we affect each other. He told me, I told him about my procedure next week. He said he was going to pray for me and get the whole church to pray for me. And he said, you know, sometimes I do preaching too. He was an interesting cat. He had gotten, like, he had some upper level degrees. He had launched a number of businesses and he was still working. And he was a veteran. I'm just saying, these are interesting people you meet traveling. Urban nomad meets some interesting cats in the world.